So if you have your Bible with you, uh, you can go to a passage of Scripture so long. You can just go to 1 Peter 2 so long. Just keep your Bible open there. And tonight we are going to talk about rise up, rise up. And this morning, this morning's message was really one to encourage, really encourage God's people and to get God's people to the place where we realize again that Jesus Christ, Messiah, has come to bring in the kingdom of his father to the earth when he walked this earth in living colors. And when we read through the gospels, when we study the gospels, we know that Jesus Christ in everything that he did from the morning until the evening, every day that he walked with his disciples, he didn't go to try and prove that he was right. He walked in righteousness and he taught his disciples as well to do very much the same. And then we said, and from our premise now, 2 Corinthians 5.21, we have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. His righteousness has been bestowed on you. You walk in the light and in the life of that righteousness of Christ. So tonight is a little bit more militant. And the picture the Lord gave me was one, as I saw it in the spirit and as the Lord revealed it to me, it's one of those that can make a person a little bit sad in the sense of that is, now listen to this, this is the state of some who are in the body of Christ. This is not everybody. If you remember the one Sunday night when I shared where the Holy Spirit said to us that we are to cross the bridge, we need to go over to the other side, we need to move across, and in the, the Power of Transformation course, level two, where I talk about that you leave law and you move into grace. You go from limitation into liberation. And the only time, now listen to this, and this is what the Spirit of God is reminding of, us of this evening again, is that the only time you look back, luister nou mooi vanavond mense, die enigste tyd wat ons terugkyk, the only time we look back, is to grab the hand of someone who's lagging behind. And this word is going to come in strongly tonight because we do believe that we are in those times where the Spirit of God is encouraging the people of God. And I, I, I'm not going to refer to those as then the stalwarts of faith and the ones who are supremely strong. No, no, no. Those who have learned to operate in the revelation of Christ. Those who have grown to a maturity in the things of God, we have an incredible responsibility to the rest of the body of Christ. And tonight is going to be one of those nights that we are reminded that at times we have to look back, but it's only again to uplift others and drag, <laughs> even drag them across that bridge with you. Now, if they come kicking and screaming, drag them because we need to get them to the side where they need to be because if they are going to remain on this side of the bridge where they are restricted by human limitations and restricted by external stimuli from the world system they're going to get stuck and they're going to stay stuck and that is why we need to cross that bridge we need to cross over this morning we spoke about the fact that we are People who have been transferred out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the son of his love. That's where we are. That's our position. That's our positional sanctification. That is where the Lord brought us in to stand and, 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 and remain and meet and be and move in his glory. Because we have been justified. We've been sanctified. We have been glorified by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And those three terms are very, very, very powerful because it's, it's done for you. It has been done for you. And all you have to do is live and move in the richness of it. Because I don't know if you realize that you are an extremely wealthy person in your spirit. Because all the things that pertains to life and godliness has already been given unto you. It's already been given to you. You have it on the inside. And, and, and it is a sad picture, and which I'm going to share with you now, of the, the Christians who are, they love the Lord, they, they love reading the Bible, they pray, 
they go to a place of assembly, a church. Uh, they perhaps even involved in a, in a life group, a connection point, a, a, a home cell. Um, they perhaps even involved in the praise and worship team. They active, but many of them are stuck. So the picture that the Lord showed me, he showed me three different people in the kingdom of God. He showed me three different people who are all clothed in battle array, full battle armor. But the first group were sleeping. They were in a deep sleep, but yet they were clothed in battle armor. And the instruction from the Spirit of God is that we cannot slumber or sleep in the time we are in now. We need to be wide awake as soldiers of the kingdom of God. And we need to be so alert in what is going on around us because the enemy will pull a fast one on you. If you are sleeping in your battle armor, the second group that I saw was sitting down. They were sitting down, kind of looking for better days. The ones that want things just to fall into their lap. The ones that would say, well, you know the song, Kay Salah, Salah, whatever will be, will be. Lot gods water, maar oor gods akker vloe. It's the group of people who are in a they're like in a very uncomfortable pause. They, they're in a place that is not good because you will remember I spoke about this, that two-thirds of the enemy's or half of the enemy's name is um, set. And the people who set, Satan half is set. They waited for things to happen. They were expecting things just to come into their lap. They wanted the others to do things for them. They want to be served. They want to just receive. They want to be comfortable. And I want to say this to you this evening. It is a very dangerous place to be. Because even if you have on your full ba battle armor, the enemy will find gaps in your armor when you are sitting waiting for better days. Because the days we are in are not going to get better in the sense of sunshine and roses and everything is going to be just wonderful. And you're going to tiptoe through the tulips and you're going to smell the roses uh, and the tulips <laughs> for that matter. And um, that's not where we are at at this hour. It is an hour that we need to stand and be strong and move out and rise up. And then the third group that I saw, these were the ones who were stuck. They had their full battle armor on, but they were stuck. And they were the ones who, you know, when the previous one that I mentioned, that was basically on pause. But these were the ones who were like staring into the distance. They were stuck. And the reason they were stuck is because they thought and they had a projection in their own minds that what they had gone through, that the future is going to be no different. They had a very bleak look on the future because they're expecting the future to be um, as it was in the past or even worse. So where they've had tough times, where it's been difficult for them, where it's been the challenges, the one on top of the other, and they have been finding it hard just to try and make it to keep their noses above the water. They are ones who are stuck. It's like I could see their feet stuck and they couldn't move. And the picture that the Lord gave me there, you know the old story of the elephant. And I know it's a little bit of a sad story, but the elephant, and this is true, this is what happens with the circus and the circus elephants. They've got a stake that they put in the ground when the elephants are feeding, when they are walking on the outside of the tent. They've got a stake in the ground, a, a thick metal peg. And then they've got a chain around that, and they've got a chain around the elephant's foot. And the elephant had become so used and accustomed to that chain and that peg that the elephant in its own mind does not believe that it can actually move beyond the boundary and the, the limitation of that particular chain. How many of you know it's no problem for that elephant whatsoever? He won't even break a sweat to do a hard pull on that chain and pull that pig right out of the ground, no problem at all. 
You see, but the thing is, the elephant was conditioned. And unfortunately, how many of God's people hear this carefully tonight? And this is what the Spirit wants to encourage the body of Christ with tonight, that we can get out of that mode, out of that mode of limitation into liberation from that law that we've become accustomed to, that we've got to abide by this and this and this and this and this of the world, instead of getting into the spirit and operating in the liberty that the spirit of God has already brought to us, every single one of us. So how many of God's people don't have these chains around their ankles? And then they are treated like circus animals. Because, you see, our training that we have received in this world has been to condition us according to the world system. Amen? So this world has conditioned us to operate according to its system. How many of you know that there is another kingdom that is far superior to the kingdom of this world? That you are connected You've been brought into a kingdom that is far superior to the kingdom and the reign of this world. So what I received in my spirit is that the spirit of God said, I want my people to listen to this, rise up. But he added a little tale to that this afternoon. Because this message I had ready in the week. Already I had this ready because the spirit of God said to me, this is where you're going to go on Sunday night. And this afternoon, he added the little tail. <laughs> and he said, I don't just want my people to rise up. I want them to rise up and reign. Guys, because you can rise up. And you can dance. And you can rejoice. And you can be in a place of, of um, victory in the battles that you had fought. But if you are in a place of reigning, it means it is a position that is steadfast and strong in the spirit where you have been brought into and you stay there. You don't move back from that. It is a place that you move into and you move forward in that. So you are going to find that in the days we are in now, there are some of you, and hear the word of the Lord tonight. There are some of you who are going to be promoted in the spirit. A couple of weeks ago, this word came, but it was a little bit more gentle than tonight, that the Lord says he's going to give you a higher spiritual address. You're going to get to that place where you're going to operate on a stronger and a higher level. But tonight, the spirit of God is saying to you, you are going to get promotion in the spirit. But guys, listen, there's a price to pay for that. And the price that you pay for that, hear this, is not a difficult price to pay. It's not hard. What is that price that we have to pay, JP? That price you have to pay is to let go of the things of the world. It is to watch your speech and the things that you say. It is to be careful in the groups that you go around with. Hear this tonight. Because if you are in, in a group or groups where you are being limited by the people in that group, where you cannot fully explore your spiritual potential that the Spirit of God has already pre-assigned and pre-designed for you, and if you cannot operate and be set free and be liberated in order to operate in that, you are in the wrong group and you need to get out. You need to get into a place where you can operate and function of like, not like-minded, like-spirited people, where you are going to be free and you are going to be in a place of such liberty that the Spirit of God will have access and expression in and through your life, where your mouth will belong to the Spirit of God. Where your mouth, your speech, you're going to see a couple of things that the Spirit gave me tonight. Where your speech will line up with kingdom speech. If your speech at this time is not kingdom speech, you are not ready for your promotion. Then there is still some training that you need to go through. Yes, you want, but we don't always get it right. I understand that and I hear you. 
but you need to start speaking what the word of God says about you. You need to start affirming what the word of God says about you. You need to understand that the word of God runs very swiftly. And when it's in your mouth, it carries incredible power. That is why the spirit is very, very careful with whom he works in this particular capacity for you to get to that level of the highest spiritual address, to stand strong and secure and steadfast. And you are able then not only to go forward yourself, but then to take others with you. Because this is what the Spirit said to me. He said, there is the royal priesthood. Now, you've got your Bible open. I already gave you the, those of you who came in a bit later, I saw you came in a bit later. No problem at all. You're always welcome with us. We let you in whatever time. It's good to come in at seven if you can. But we do understand the circumstances of life. And in South Africa, we've got load shedding. So in 1 Peter chapter 2, oh, what an awesome scripture. Listen to this. You are a chosen Say it with me. Come on, you know what that scripture says. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. <laughs> I, I taught my students in the second level of the power of transformation training courses. I, I, I've got a thing that I say there to them. And at the end of that course, we were all saying it. When you are a royal uh, um, a chosen generation and a royal priesthood you can enter into a royal rest and we roll the r like that on purpose so because <laughs> so so tonight when you are finished with the session go to your partner go to your husband or your wife or your parents or your children in the house what i say i am in a royal rest because i'm of a royal priesthood <laughs> hallelujah we can have awesome fun as well in the spirit, guys. And you know what? The spirit of God has given us that awesome sense of humor. Now watch. You're a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. His own special people. I, I like what the other translation says. His own peculiar people. And we know some of us are more peculiar than others. Others, And that's totally okay. We're family. <laughs> <laughs> you're a special people why are you all of this that the bible just described you why are you that chosen generation why are you that royal priesthood why are you a chosen nation why are you a peculiar people Ooh, i love this the rest of that verse is so that you may show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light that is what we are here for so we've been set apart in revelation chapter 1 verse 6 it says we are a kingdom and priests unto our god in the book of revelation the last book of the bible we are told we are a priesthood kings and a priesthood unto our god Sometimes we don't realize not just what it is that we carry on the inside, but whom it is that we carry on the inside. Because he has come to make his residence inside of you in Colossians 2 verse 9 and 10. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, according to the Amplified in verse 10 of that particular chapter, says that he's come to make his abode on the inside of you. Now watch. The Lord says, when you rise up, you need to dust off your feet. Why is that important? Because to the measure that you dust your feet off from where you've been and the bad experiences of your past and whatever it is that you've gone through, once you've dusted your feet off, you are going to get, listen to this, clear direction. To the measure that you dust the dust off your feet is the measure by which you're going to be here. Uh, excuse me, is the measure by which you're going to have clarity in direction in where you need to be going next. Too many of us are holding on to too many things of the past. Let it go. You are in a new dispensation. You are in a new climate in the spirit. That climate in the spirit is conducive to the spirit of God working and operating through you. Because you've become ready in the season. 
the season that you are in now, you've been prepared for. You see, God, I mentioned this last week. I'm going to repeat it. God doesn't change his seasons to fit in with you. He changes you to fit in with these seasons. So always be ready. Guys, in the spirit, you always have to be flexible. You've got to be like a gymnast in the spirit. You've got to be flexible in the move that the spirit is going to make with you. You've got to be that person. That when the spirit of God in that place speaks to you, guys, listen, the voice of the Holy Spirit and the volume of the voice of the Holy Spirit in you is completely Real, that voice is completely determined by your sensitivity to the Spirit of God. There are many people who ask, well, what does the voice of God sound like? And the reason we don't hear his voice is because of the static in our minds, because our minds are too busy. Guys, you need to quieten your minds. Now watch. He says he's going to give governmental insight. This is, this is a strong message this evening. He's going to give governmental insight. What does that mean? I write these things down and I say, Spirit of God, you've given me that. What does that mean? Speak to me so that I can speak to the people of God. Governmental insight means that he is going to, the ones who are ready for that promotion in the Spirit, he is going to help you in order to discern accurately, hear this, hear this, discern accurately the lives of those and the spirit of those. You're going to have insight into the lives of those who are ready to be directed and developed. I'm going to say that again. He's going to give governmental insight in the spirit to those who are ready to receive their promotion in the spirit who have locked themselves off from the things of the world are and are attaching themselves to the kingdom of God in its fullness, you are going to receive insight from the Spirit of God to discern, develop, and direct. The discernment is to see the capacity in other believers that God has placed there for them to come into that place where he can operate through them. I'm going to pause there for a moment because I know this is deep. I'm going to just pause so that we can, let's just grab a, grab a hold of this tonight. That means, and I would love to hear from you. When the Spirit of God starts moving like that in you, please connect with me and say to me, Yuan, God is starting to show me things in the Spirit about people that I need to connect with. Because I do believe that I'm going to be of value for them. You're going to be the value add to their lives from the kingdom of God. How awesome is that? You see, when this happens, and this is what I've been waiting for. I, I, I'm being very frank and open with you. I've been waiting for this. This time where it's not about you. It is about the lives of people that you can impact. But you need something for that sensitivity in the spirit, disconnection from the world, connection to the kingdom of God, attachment to that spirit of God, that the spirit of God that is going to show you the, those things that you need to operate in and move in, in the spirit. Ooh, glory. So there's going to be governmental insight. And that's, that's, the, that's the phrase. That, so there's going to be generals in the spirit. Because remember, he showed me the picture of three soldiers. So this is all military tonight. <laughs> We're talking military here. So he's going to raise up generals. That's going to raise up the others in the kingdom to then also go through the ranks because we're in that time. I tell you guys, we are in that time. You, you are going to have to be at full alert. I pray that you're not one of those that the, the spirit of God showed me in the beginning, that you're not sleeping, you're not sitting in that chair, and you're not stuck. And if you feel stuck, tonight you get unstuck. <laughs> you get your feet out of those stocks and you're going to get going. Now, the warriors on assignment. This is another thing he gave. I'm going to read it as he gave it. He has, he's raising up warriors that's going to be on assignment with voices that are in alignment 
with the kingdom of God, with the throne of God. Warriors are assigned. It's not voluntary. It's not, well, okay, I will volunteer. Guys, listen. You connect to the spirit. And you submit to the spirit. And you receive from the spirit. You receive your assignment from there. Then your alignment is with the kingdom of God's throne. You receive your instructions You've heard me talk about headquarters before. You are plugged into headquarters in order to operate in the earth. You are the extension of heaven into a place where you need to operate and bring heaven to the earth. It's always through four major things that I mentioned last week. Love, hope, faith, and grace. Those four things. It's going to operate strongly through your life. Why? Because it's through love and grace that you need to see those who are still struggling to get across that bridge that you need to turn around for. God says he's going to give you ground and territory, but it's going to be given in accordance to your non-entanglement in the enterprises of civilian life. You say, whoa, say that again. This I got from 2 Timothy chapter 3 and 4. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. He says he's going, to give more, he's going to give more ground and more territory in accordance to your non-entanglement in the enterprises of civilian life. Why? Because you've been called as a soldier and a warrior in the kingdom of God. That means that your voice carries power and authority in the spirit. And there are those who will not be able to receive this word. Because this word is one of surrender, submission, and a looking up to him to be your all in all. So the question tonight for you is, are you ready to be promoted in the kingdom of God? And any time you want to move up in the kingdom of God, the way you move up is to move down. And you say, wait a minute, explain that. How can I move up, but I've actually got to move down? The moment you move up in leadership in the kingdom of God, you move down in servanthood. Absolutely. A leader in the kingdom of God is a servant leader. You come underneath the people and you lift them up and you encourage them and you strengthen them and you walk with them and you lead them and you guide them and you help them and you counsel them. I can go on and on and on with that, but you serve the people of God and you serve from a heart of those four things I mentioned, love faith, grace, and hope. You lead them through those. You, 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 it's like you govern, but you govern from a heart of love and a place of grace. That's what I wanted to share with you this evening. My heart feels enlightened in the spirit in just what we have shared with you so far. If there is someone online tonight and you feel in your spirit, that this word is for you. I'm going to ask you to be bold and just connect with me because I would love to just hear from you because it's very, very possible that this is where it's going to start. That with the governmental insight to discern, develop, and direct, that we start where we are on this group. And this group, I trust the Lord uh, Des and I spoke about it this afternoon. I trust that this group will go grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Only not for anybody's name to be mentioned. It's never about an individual. You've heard my heart on that. And you've heard me say this. Many of you online tonight, you've been walking with me for a long time. We know one another. And there's no place for any elevation of anybody's name ever in this ministry. 
It is the elevation of one name, and his name is Jesus Christ. But we can be there to assist and help you. And perhaps this is the place where we're going to start. If you feel you are there, then let me know so that we can start looking at developing and then also directing because the Spirit of God wants me to do this. And then from there, we're going to flow out. The Spirit of God is busy doing something completely new. I've been waiting on the Spirit of the Lord. Also with a fast, those of you who fast with us, who are on the, the it's called the, the, the Open Heavens group. If you're not on that group and you want to be on that group, please let me know because I want to help you. And on the Open Heavens group, that's where we do the fasting and the prayer. When we do the fasting and the prayer, we do a three-day fast every month. Sometimes it stands over into the next month. It's okay. I don't want to do it regimentally. Regimentally, I want to do it spiritually. What the Spirit of God says. If I feel a hold in my spirit, I wait. If the Holy Spirit says not yet, I wait. Until he says now. Then I'll release it on that group. And I say, guys, we are going to fast from that day to that day. And I do believe this time it's going to be different because we need to pray for South Africa. I know there are groups praying for South Africa right now, and that's wonderful. And we need to all connect with one another and pray. We need to connect with one another and pray. The more groups we can get in South Africa to pray over our country, the better. We need it. Because we've got false and we've got horrendous things that are prophesied over our nation. And tonight, in the name of Jesus, we resist that in Jesus' name. We break all the words that have been spoken. I sense it in my spirit tonight. I wasn't planning on saying this, but the spirit of God tonight, I can feel him rising up on the inside of me and you. We break every single word that has been spoken over our nation that is negative, contrary to the word, and of a depressive nature. We break those words in Jesus' name. We command it to be cast to the ground. We stand on those words. We nullify it. We cancel them in Jesus' name. And tonight we speak by the Spirit of God. And we speak, we speak goodness over our nation. We speak upliftment over our nation, South Africa. We speak encouragement over our nation, South Africa. The problem in this nation is that we have no leaders with backbone who will stand up and speak comfort to our people. The Bible says, where the righteous rule, the people are in peace. But where the unrighteous rule, the people are disturbed. <coughs> that is why. Let us start where we are, with whom we are, in the spirit, and speak life into our nation. And I'll be one of those who will join with you and join arms with you to speak life over South Africa. The Bible says, in a lot of words, sin is not lacking. In Proverbs, it says, you even need to muzzle your mouth. We know that the prayer is prayed. Lord, put a guard before my mouth. Keep watch over my lips. We as the people of God, do you know that as sons and daughters of the kingdom, we have got such power in the words that we speak because it comes from a spirit that's filled with faith. Let us in this week, can I ask you all of you online tonight, those of you are listening to this via YouTube, because there are other countries, thank you, Jesus, there are people in other nations also listening to this. That we start as the body of Christ, sons and daughters of God, to speak life from our mouths. First of all, listen carefully over your own life, over your family, over your relatives, your acquaintances, your colleagues, your friends. Speak life over them because that's the training ground for you to start speaking life over bigger things. 
speak life over South Africa. Amen. Now, for those of you who want to connect with me, if you do not have my details, I'm going to give it to you after I've prayed. And we need to get this process started. It's time. That's a state. Is there anyone online tonight and you would like to share something that the Lord's laid upon your heart? You know that this is not a one-man show. I open it up to those whom the Spirit has spoken to, that we can hear what the Spirit is saying through you as well. I just want to ask you this. Please keep it short and please be on point with what we said tonight. Let it not be off subject. So I'm going to, uh, I do believe that um, perhaps it's on already. Yes, you can unmute yourself and you can talk to me and to us. Hello, Johan. Renee here. Hello, Renee. Go ahead. Okay, very quick one. Um, as you were here some time back, the Lord prompted me to speak to a friend of mine that has no work and to get him in contact with another friend of mine who has plenty of work. And thank the Lord that I listened to what he was telling me because I contacted this friend, this friend of mine and he spoke to other friend of mine. And now they're both working together and doing exceedingly well. Thank as this other friend of mine has been gifted with so much work that it's passed on to a friend of mine that had nothing and was looking at dire straits. So I thank the Lord for discernment and for encouraging me to, when, I, when he spoke to me, he said, speak to him. He said that name clearly in my heart. I did so. Mm -hmm. And today, thank God, we are still chatting together and he's seeking more. He's seeking to come to the Lord in more ways as well, plus work. So I thank the Lord for just doing what I was meant to do in Jesus' name. Amen, Rene. All the way from Spain. Rene and Delia <laughs> are in Spain. And you know what, Rene? That, that's the thing that was said earlier on. So you, you helped to direct. And when you, you discerned and you directed. And they, there are two people now whom the Lord is taking care of. And this yeah. is exactly what we're talking about. Amen, Rene. Thank you for sharing. Appreciate that. Yeah. Hi, Johan. Hi there. Who, who's that? Uh, this is Sebastian. Sebastian, just, go ahead. I just wanted to share something that's um, from one of your sermons, I, th I think a couple of years ago, called Just Dropping In. Okay. And uh, you were teaching from Mark chapter 2, where it said, faith, um, faith finds where Jesus must be. And what? And starts digging away at the clay and the straw of the roof until he found a gap big enough. Faith was the digger and the doer. He says sure. faith is the, the activator. Hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised. And, and its strength lies in, in his faithfulness. Hope was the seer. Hope was behind faith. Hope is always fixed on the horizon. Hope is always looking ahead at what can be, always looking forward. Hope always hopeful, but faith makes it happen. And because of Hebrews chapter 1, that's why hope is constantly pushing faith. Then love is the mover. Love moves things. Because of love, this guy found himself on the roof of Peter's house where Jesus is preaching. It's because of the love this man had for his friend. Four friends put their friends before. Uh, needs before their own are you that kind of a friend are you hoping for a breakthrough for a friend mm. are you the in, are you the encourager are you the barnabas to that specific friend are you the pusher the digger the mover that um it says love wants this wants to move this guy into the presence of the lord and then grace is god's view and opinion which is heaven's reality expressed from his heart to us as people um, Grace says, I'm going to give this guy a chance today to be in the presence of Jesus. His life is going to change today because grace is always a giver. Faith is activated by love, faith, and hope, and love, and grace work together. Sure. Have you got the date on that one, Sebastian? No, I'm not sure. I think it's maybe 
2021 score just oh, dropping okay. in. Just dropping in. Okay. <laughs> because that sermon now is so in line with what was shared tonight. Sebastian, thank you for sharing that. Um, I'm actually going to ask you a favor, please. Would you mind just taking, just take snapshots with your phone of that and just send it through to me? Because I'd just like to read through that again, because it's so in line with what we said tonight that um, loving our friends means we're going to bring them into the presence of Jesus. And this is really what tonight was about, is that we're going to be those soldiers and warriors that's going to bring the others across the bridge. Thank you so much for sharing that. Spot on and on point. Thank you. We're doing very well for time, guys. Is there anybody else? Otherwise, we'll start uh, moving towards closing the, the service. Is there anyone anders? Jo, my spirit is so encouraged tonight through this. Praise the Lord. Okay. Wow, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Spirit's not finished. The Spirit of God is not finished. Just hold there because the Spirit is busy stirring on the inside of me. Yeah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you that tonight we can speak life into every home that is represented online right now and those who will be listening afterwards. I speak life into every situation in your life, into your work situation. Some of you right now are extremely frustrated in your work situation. I want you to right now submit that to the Lord. I know you've prayed about it, but now the Spirit of God has brought it out into the open that you are facing issues at work. Father, we bring our precious brothers and sisters before you tonight in Christ. This is family. Father, this is family. We are of the household of faith. We are together under the same spiritual roof. So, Father, tonight in Jesus' name, every single one of us, Father, who are in that place of care, concern, love, and grace towards our family, Father, we stand together now in unity in prayer. And we pray either for that entire situation to change and be transformed at your work situation or for God to move you. Father, but we pray, and this is our prayer, that your divine will will be done in the work situation of what those are facing right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you now for the testimonies that's going to come through where we're going to hear this is what the Lord has done, and we give you praise for it. If there's sickness tonight, if you are sick in body, put your hand on that area of your body that is sick and ailed and hurt or pain. Um, put, your, put your hand on that part of your body where you need healing. I believe in the power of God. You've heard me say this before. I hear people say, I believe in the power of prayer. I do. I do. But I believe in the power of God through prayer. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, there where you have your hand on your body that needs healing, that needs a touch from the Lord. Again, let's stand in agreement tonight as the body of Christ. Father, we thank you. We can bring our family before you now who are hurting and in pain and in discomfort. Who are sick in body. And Father, we thank you that Jesus came to make a way for us. Salvation and sickness was paid for on the cross of Calvary. Tonight, we speak divine healing into your bodies from the top of your heads to the soles of your feet. We command your bodies through the blood of Jesus Christ that he paid for for your sins and for your sicknesses, that the divine design of God over your body will now completely be, um, it will take root in your heart now, from your heart outwards, every cell in your body, the bone structure, the tendons, will now start functioning according to God's original divine design in the name of Jesus. From the heart outwards, blood, circulation, respiratory, all those issues. Father, thank you for touching them tonight by your spirit in Jesus' name. There's no distance in prayer. Wherever you are now, receive your healing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There are parents who are struggling with children. You are praying for your children and 
you're trusting the Lord that they will come back to Jesus because it seems like they have become a bit cold and indifferent in their hearts towards the things of God. Let's pray for your children right now. Father, we bring these beautiful people before you and their children. Father, because you love us, and you've exposed your heart to us, your children. We know your love for us, Father, and our love for our children, you know. Therefore, we pray tonight in the name of Jesus that they will come from their wayward ways and follow the line back to the cross of Christ. And Father, that they'll bring their hearts back, that they'll bring themselves into alignment again with the kingdom of God. Thank you that you've never let them go. You've always had them by the hand. But thank you that all the prodigals are coming back. And I, still, I also speak over children's minds tonight in Jesus' name. Children that have been influenced by this wicked system. Father, we thank you for a wall of fire around their minds to protect them against the evil one. And for the grace of God, to so infiltrate their hearts and lives. Father, that by grace, they will rise up and stand. We thank you for that tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for your supply, for provision, for the people of God. Those of you who are struggling right now financially, just open your hands, your life to receive from God. Father, I pray release from your abundant supply for your people so that they can have sufficient to live and more than enough to give. And I give you praise for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You can see my wife put my number and the email address on the screen. It's on the chat box. Just grab a hold of it there. I won't log, I won't um, close the session. I'll just log off, but the session will still be open. You can write the, the details down. Get in touch with me. We're going to help you. God bless you. You have an awesome week. Go do exploits in his name. Be a warrior that stands for Christ. Love you guys. You are valuable and precious. We'll spot you next week. God bless.